Bruchim Aboyim. Class tonight will deal with the, we've dealt with death, and this class will be an extension of that. We'll be dealing with the concept of mourning. Now, we need to know that the soul is eternal. That even though we mourn someone dying, as we've tried to paint the picture, that death is really an extension of life. It's really the main part of life, to move into this next dimension that we call in Hebrew, Olam Haba, the world to come, or eternity. The, the way to look at the relationship between the body and the soul is much like a person um, travels, he flies into a city, to an airport, and in the airport he rents a car. He takes that car and uses the car while he does his business, while he's in that city. And when he finishes up with his business, he takes the car back to the airport, turns it to the rent-a-car desk, hops on a plane, flies back off to where he came. And that's really the journey of the soul. We fly into this world and we rent a car. That's our body. That body is not us. The car that you rent at the airport is not you. You are the person inside of the car. Without you, the car doesn't do anything. You're the, what, what makes the car work. The soul is what gives energy to the body. The soul is what moves the body. When the soul leaves, the body becomes inanimate. In fact, so much so that when we bury someone, we really give the body back to the rent car which is earth. We return the body back to Mother Earth, where it came from. God took man and made him from, offer from, the, from the, dirt, the dust of the earth. So when we return, when a person dies, we need to know that even though we have sorrow, the sorrow is not in death. The sorrow is really that we hopefully, and we know as we've mentioned before, everybody goes to heaven. So if that's the case, it's really graduation day. It's really terrific. But even on graduation day, those people that are still in school that say goodbye to their comrade, to their friend, there's a loss. You know, in sports, when people retire, it's not the money that they miss as much as the camaraderie. And that becomes the key. And when a person mourns, when you go to a shiva house, to a house of mourning, it doesn't make a difference how old the person is. The loss is great because you're not going to see that person again. And that loss is very difficult, even though there's a joy, or should be a joy, for the fact of that person moving on to their final reward. The real mourning is not for the person who's left. The real mourning is for the person who stays behind, who is now bereft of the body. I know my mother died, broke me up. And it's funny that my, my great loss was that I thought I actually lost the mitzvah. I loved so much having that mitzvah, honoring my mother for all that she had done for me. Truth is, if it wasn't a mitzvah, I would have done it anyways, but it was a great mitzvah to do. And then when she died, I cried, and I thought, the mitzvah's gone. And then I came to realize the mitzvah didn't leave. It just got harder. There was no one to say thank you. But the mitzvah remained. And I send my mother what I say. My mother's like in Florida, and I send her UPS, and I do mitzvahs to connect with her. And she's very much a part of who and what I am, always. And as long as I take a breath, she continues to live. And that's really Im uh, immortality in this world. The fact that you leave people behind that talk about you, that think about you, that connect to you. But what's even more important is that we still have that connection to that soul. That we go visit a grave. We see in the Torah that when Kalev, one of the 12 spies, that his success came from him going to the graves of the forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and asking them to intercede, to give him the strength, to be able to overcome the, the 10 spies who were planning to uh, revolt against Moshe, to have the Jews not go into the land. So we go to the grave of a righteous person, or to our parents, or to whomever. And we believe that there's a connection, that we have an inside connection to God by going to them. We don't pray to them. We ask them to intercede. So we know that the 
we living inherit from the dead, but in reality we also have to know that the dead inherit from the living and that's our connection. When a person dies and you do a mitzvah for that person, when you come to shul and you go to yisker, the remembrance, and you give charity, and that's part of the things in the Kalmale, in the prayer that we say of giving charity for the deceased. One of the, one of the things we say when someone has what we call a yort site, an anniversary of a death, the Hebrew term we say is that the neshama should have an aliyah in heaven. The soul should have an elevation in, in heaven. Because it still continues to move up. We're always moving. We're always getting better, even after we die. And how does that happen? By the investments we make in this world, all the things that we leave behind that are paying us dividends. By the education that we give our children, by the words that we teach them, by the instruction that they learn from us. By, we teach them, Osam, you should teach them. Osam is the word emes, by teaching them truth. And they follow our instruction. And that's why it says that Yaakov never died, because all of his sons were righteous. And to this day we quote our Zayda, our grandfather Yaakov. And one of the things that we use most to connect to the deceased is what we call Kaddish. And, and it's very strange because this is the prayer of the dead, the mourner. And when you read the English, there's nothing mentioned about death. There's nothing mentioned about the name of the mourner. Why do we say it? And it's connected to a story in the Gemara of Rabbi Akiva. It says Rabbi Akiva was walking with the sages and they saw a man with a very black, charred face who was collecting wood quickly. And he went over to him and said, what are, you, what are you doing? What do you look as you do? And he says that I am in Gehenna, I'm in purgatory. And every day I collect wood, and this word, wood they burn me with. And I do this day after day. I was an evil person in life. And the rabbi said, there's something I can do for you. And he said, well, before I died, there was a son that was born to me. If he would praise God, then that would be a great benefit for my soul. And he asked where he had lived. And he went to the town and he found that his orphan son was there who was a wild child. And Rabbi Akiva took him under his wing and helped him to change his ways, taught him how to read. And when he said the Kaddish, Yiskadal vi Yiskadash me Rabbah, a praise of God, that has ten descriptions of praise to God. Then that night, this man appeared to him in a dream and his face was perfectly clean. And he thanked Rabbi Akiva that his son saying the Kaddish saved his soul. And it's interesting, the real essence of saying Kaddish is for a parent. And, and that's not really the greatest loss. We all say Kaddish for a loss of, God forbid, a wife, a child, should never happen, a sibling. who are closer to our age and even younger. And we only say Kaddish for them for 30 days. For a parent, we say it for 11 months, for the year. And we don't do a whole year because we say no one's that bad, that has that much correction. So we do 11 months. But still, why so long for a parent who is old, generally, and for siblings or whatever that are closer to our age, only 30 days. The answer is because they are our connection to the forefathers, which is how we became Jewish, our connection to God. It's not something we've done, it's something they did. And we're connected to that through our parents. And it's our way of thanking them for that connection that we have. And even though it's an interesting thing, even people that aren't religious, when they say Kaddish, there's something very special that ignites in their soul. It connects them. It's one of those opportunities in life to find our way back to God. Death, again, as we see as a negative, has so many positives to it. And even though it sounds backwards, and I understand that, but it awakens things within us, and it brings us closer to our true Father in Heaven. The truth of the matter is our parents are really, we're adopted. Every one of us is a child of God. And God gives us over to our parents. And that's our connection with them. Our true parent and that which we will reunite, reunite with at the end of time is God Almighty. So when we say the Kaddish, what we do is connect. Because the one sin that you cannot repent for is what we call Chil Hashem. Desecrating God's name. And the only way to do that is try to do a Kiddush Hashem, sanctify God's name. And when the child says the Kaddish, what he is doing is sanctifying God's name. And it's an inconvenience. 
But it's amazing how, especially if you do it three times a day and come to a synagogue to pray for your, your parents that have, or someone that's moved on. I've seen one, one person just finish saying it. There's a loss when you stop saying it. That connection is, is somehow severed in some way, even though it's not. And when we go to the cemetery, it's difficult. I know it took me years to stop crying when I would go visit my mother's grave. But it's human, or there's a connection. But what we do is interesting. We put a tombstone, a matseva at the grave, and we believe there are five parts of the soul. And we believe in reincarnation. We believe the day will come when all souls will be resurrected through what we call the luz bone, seemed to be improbable years ago. Now we realize that this bone that's very small, almost something you can't even almost see, but indestructible, has all the DNA of every person. And that luz bone through that, the Jurassic Park, so to speak, will be recreated. And all people will come back. That's what we call Tchias Mason, revival of the dead. And we believe that one of the five parts of the soul, of the Neshech, Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama, the Nefesh is the, the, the soul itself, the vitality. The Ruach is the intellectual part, is the Neshama, the, the spiritual part. And then the Chaya and Yechida are those parts like a halo that are outside, the, the, those th first three reside within the body. And that's why the God can rest, the, the spirituality of God can rest on any ten people for a minion. Because those two parts, the Chayim Yechid, are outside the body. That that spirituality remains, and there's a part of the soul that stays with the soul at the grave. Waiting for that moment of Tchiyas HaMesu. And it's interesting that that tombstone is made out of stone. And we believe that you leave all the heavy things at the grave and all the light things you take with you. That's important. That a person always needs to think in positive ways and walk around with those positive thoughts. And you need to go visit people. It's a great mitzvah to go visit someone who's in mourning. And, in fact, the mitzvah of bearing someone is called chesed shalemis, the, the, the truest of all kindnesses. Because whenever you do someone a favor, no matter who he is, he might return the favor to you. When you do a favor for someone who has died, that's it. There's nothing they can do for you. So that's the truest of all kindnesses. And many times when we think of going to visit someone who's had a loss, we're at a loss. And we think, what am I going to say? What can I do? What difference is it going to make? But you need to know that just going there, just going to a, a shiva house, just to see someone, for a person to know that you came, that someone cares, it makes them feel better. And you'll say what you say. And they may say nothing. It doesn't make a difference. We believe that joy with a friend is doubled and that sorrow is cut in half. So when you go to that shiva house, if you say nothing, you have made that person, you've taken part of their sorrow with you and you've made them feel better. And not only that, part of the realities of life is to know that it will end. You know, it's interesting. It's, we think we're going to live forever many times. And the truth is we're not. Life is finite. And we have a mission to accomplish. And we waste so much time killing time. And it's for us to know when we go to a house of mourning to realize that time is so precious and that we need to acknowledge that and think about that. And from the negative comes positives. If I tell you to jump as high as you can, if you're smart, the first thing you'll do is crouch, because the lower you go, the higher you'll jump. And being, in, being around death makes a person think. It's a negative that brings out great positives. So a person needs to know time, the greatest gift of all. We need to use it so that we can help others re reach our mission and find our final reward in that thing we call eternity in the world to come. God bless you all, and thank you for coming.